Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. May I have your attention, please? Good evening and a very warm welcome to all our distinguished guests. Honorable Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, Her Excellency Nancy Pelosi. Honorable External Affairs Minister of India, His Excellency Dr. Subramaniam Jayashankar. Ambassador of India to the United States, Harshwardhan Shringla. Members of the delegation from the Ministry of External Affairs, esteemed guests, I welcome you all on behalf of the Embassy of India to this commemoration of the 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. I now invite Ambassador of India to the United States, Harshwardhan Shringla, to kindly come on stage and give welcome remarks. Honorable Speaker of the House of Representatives, Her Excellency Nancy Pelosi, Honorable External Affairs Minister of India, His Excellency Dr. S. Jayashankar, Secretary of the, of the Navy, Richard Spencer, and other senior officials from the U.S. Administration, members of Congress, and ambassadors of Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Trinidad and Tobago, South Africa, and Myanmar, ladies and gentlemen, Namaskar. We are gathered here today in the Library of Congress to mark a historic occasion, the commemoration of the 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhiji, or Bapu, as he was affectionately referred to, was a simple man who not only guided India's freedom struggle, but also inspired movements for civil rights and freedom across the world. He continues to remain a spiritual beacon for humanity. Mahatma Gandhi traveled to London to study law and later to practice as a lawyer in South Africa. He returned to India in 1915 as a leader of India's movement for independence. The racial inequities that he witnessed and experienced abroad and in colonial India firsthand and his choice of the political weapons of Satyagraha, civil disobedience and non-cooperation to counter them were instrumental in his transformation and that of his country. While Mahatma Gandhi could never travel to America, his work was closely followed in the US. The New York pastor John Haynes Holmes, who founded the American Civil Liberties Union, de delivered a sermon titled, Who is the Greatest Man in the World? His answer, Mahatma Gandhi. The Chicago-based magazine, The Christian Century, repeatedly proposed Mahatma Gandhi's name for the Nobel Peace Prize. Gandhiji's salt march in 1930 was closely followed in the US, and during his imprisonment after the salt march, he received letters of support from ordinary Americans who identified with, with his struggle for freedom, equality, and dignity for all. The Time magazine chose him as Man of the Year as early as in 1930. Several great American leaders, including Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., in 1959, have retraced the steps of Mahatma Gandhi in the Sabarmati Ashram in Gujarat. Mahatma Gandhi was also a source of inspiration for Nelson Mandela, former President Barack Obama, and for our guest of honor today, Speaker Nancy Pelosi. I recall that in my very first interaction with Madam Speaker at the US ISPF summit in July, she had mentioned that her curiosity in Mahatma Gandhi was aroused right from her school days when she read every book in the school library on Mahatma Gandhi. Your presence here today, Madam Speaker, truly befits the occasion. Madam Speaker, Mr. Minister, and our esteemed guests, it is a matter of great satisfaction that on the occasion of the 150th birth anniversary, both the US Senate and House of Representatives have introduced resolutions recalling Mahatma Gandhi's contribution to mankind, emphasizing the shared influence of Gandhiji's teachings on human rights, on civil rights, leaders around the world, including Dr. Martin Luther King, and highlighting the shared values of the people of India and the United States of America. I thank Senators Bob Menendez, Ted Cruz, Mark Warner, John Cornyn, and Representatives George Holding, Brad Sherman, Joe Wilson, Gerald Connolly, P. 
Peter King, Amy Bera, Ro Khanna, Frank Pallone, Brenda Lawrence, Pete Olson, Pramila Jaipal, TJ Cox, David Price, and Ted Yoho for their valuable co-sponsorship of these resolutions. Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney has also introduced a resolution for the award of a congressional gold medal to honor Mahatma Gandhi. We're deeply honored to have with us today the External Affairs Minister, Minister of India, Dr. S. Jayashankar. As a career diplomat and now as the External Affairs Minister, Dr. Jayashankar has played a leading role in the building of the India-US strategic partnership to realize the potentials of cooperation between the oldest and largest democracies in the world. Our Minister is a member of Parliament from the constituency of Narmada in the state of Gujarat, the home state of our Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji, and Mahatma Gandhi. Madam Speaker, the India-US strategic partnership has always benefited from strong bipartisan support in Congress and is underpinned by the friendship between our people and our shared values of freedom, equality, and commitment to inclusive progress. Madam Speaker, your presence adds great value to, our, this, to this historic occasion. I thank you and the Minister for gracing today's event. I thank the US-India Strategic Partnership Forum and the Mahindra Group, which is celebrating its 75th anniversary. Today, this is the uh, day on which they're celebrating the anniversary for supporting this event. I would also like to acknowledge the fulsome support received from the Asia Division, the Library of Congress, for organizing an exhibition on Mahatma Gandhi earlier in the day today. I thank all of our guests for joining us on this memorable occasion. I would like to leave you with an idea proposed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in his op-ed in the New York Times today, which he calls the Einstein Challenge, inviting thinkers, entrepreneurs, and tech leaders to be at the forefront of spreading Gandhiji's ideas through innovation. I hope that we will all rise to meet this noble challenge. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, as many of you may be aware, one of the favorite hymns of Mahatma Gandhi was Vaishnav Janto, a song written by the poet Narsen Mehta in the 15th century, which says that a true human is one who feels the pain of others, removes misery, and is never arrogant. On the occasion of the 150th birth anniversary year of Mahatma Gandhi, the Ministry of External Affairs had compiled a video of the rendition of this melodious yet simple song sung by artists and personalities from 124 countries. We would like to share this with you today. Please enjoy Vaishnav Janto. Vaishnav Janato Dene Kahi Eche Bheed Bharai Jane Re Vaishnav Janato Dene Kahi Eche Bheed Bharai Jane Re Vaishnav Janato Sakal lok man sahune vande Sakal lok man sahune vande Ninda na kare ke nire Kalch 
Vaishnava Janata Tene Kahi Eje Pida Parai Janere Vaishnava Janata Tene Kahi Eje Vaishnava Janata Sakadalo kama sahone vande Ninda na kare kani Kia Satyana Bole Paridhan Navajali Hatere Vishna Vajana To Tene Kahi Eje Vira Parai Jane Vaishnava Janato that delightful presentation of the unity across the globe. I now request the Honorable External Affairs Minister of India, His Excellency Dr. Jay Shankar to kindly come on stage and address the gathering. Well, what can I say after a film like that? Uh, Madam Speaker, Ambassador Shringla, members of the US Congress, ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. It's really a great privilege today to join you all this evening uh, at the commemorative event to mark the 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. It is even more a particular honor to have among us Speaker Nancy Pelosi, a political figure who embodies the strength of convictions that is so relevant to the event today. Last week, Prime Minister Narendra Modi asked at an event at the United Nations what it would have been like had Mahatma Gandhi been born in a free country. We could perhaps take that even further and ask ourselves what he would advocate today if he was amongst us. The answer obviously is not a simple one. 
because Gandhiji's outlook and thoughts spanned a very broad spectrum of human activity. But to the extent we can define it within sharper boundaries, they probably are best captured by the 17 sustainable development goals that the world seeks to achieve today. These range from ending poverty and hunger, securing education, health and employment, achieving gender and income equality, combating climate change, and adopting an environmentally friendly lifestyle, adapting our consumption and production habits accordingly, and undertaking domestic and global partnerships for sustainable development. In fact, each of these themes is reflected in Gandhiji's writings, advocacy, and example. He was truly a figure ahead of his times, and the relevance of his teachings have only grown in the modern era. Madam Speaker, dear friends, you're all aware of the enormous changes underway in India. If the government of Prime Minister Narendra Modi got such a resounding mandate from the people at the 2019 elections, it is in large part due to the effective delivery on the ground of socio-economic services and benefits that are very much in consonance with this approach. Indeed, the national campaigns of the Modi government capture the essence of the SDGs fully, whether it is Swachh Bharat, Clean India, Beti ba Padao Beti Bachao, which is Educate and Empower Your Daughter, Ayushman Bharat, which is Healthy India, Jandhan Yojana, which is Financial Inclusion, Namame Gange, the cleaning of rivers, smart cities, digital India, skill India, and startup India. They are supported by ambitious initiatives to provide rural housing, as well as universal access to electricity, cooking gas, and water. Let me share with you today a sense of the scale of this change. Since 2014, 99 million toilets have been built, covering virtually the entire population. 15 million affordable rural homes were completed, and 20 million more are underway. 80 million women received free cooking gas connections. 200 million microcredits were provided, 75% of them to women. 360 million new bank accounts were added, receiving $60 million, billion dollars as transfer of benefits. The next five years will not only see this taken forward, but supported by a raft of new campaigns, the latest being one against the use of single-use plastics. When these programs began, they too were received with the same condescension that Gandhiji's ideas were a century ago. The very idea of an Indian prime minister even talking of girls' toilets in a national address was seen as bizarre. The elite forgot a famous saying of Gandhiji that cleanliness was next only to godliness, or that human rights were best delivered in the most practical form, access to sanitation, housing, health, education, and livelihood. Clearly, the people of India had a different appreciation and conveyed that emphatically when their time came. Today, if there is one challenge that Gandhiji would like us to focus on, that is that of cl combating climate change. Through a mix of policy and advocacy, there has been a fundamental shift in the way in which India approaches this issue. At Paris, it was our mediation that brought together different constituencies and interests. The founding of the International Solar Alliance there led to a massive shift, uh, led, led to a massive global adoption of solar technology. India itself has now built a renewable capacity of 120 gigawatts, well on our way to reach a target of 175 gigawatts by 2022. The new ambition is to scale that up to 450 gigawatts by 2030. But as you all know, the, flight, uh, the fight against climate change is much larger, than, la much larger than just renewable energy and greater energy efficiency. It involves a virtual overhaul of our lifestyle, whether it be in smarter cities, mass transportation, sustainable agriculture, or water usage. These are today integral elements of the government's larger strategy to combat climate change. Madam Speaker, we are all aware that on a similar set of priorities in the United States, you have shown commendable leadership. Your commitment towards clean governance and green development is widely recognized. 
Your presence here today underlines the impact that the life and message of Mahatma Gandhi has had on your own endeavors from your early youth. You have rightly highlighted in the past the influence that Mahatma Gandhi had on Martin Luther King, the iconic civil rights leader. It is this underlining of our shared values that demonstrates why the Indian American community serves as such an effective bridge between us. So once again, let me thank Ambassador Shringla and the Indian Embassy and all those who have sponsored and supported this event for this great initiative. This event has surely contributed to greater awareness of both Mahatma Gandhi and the contemporary challenges that his ideas can help us address. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Up next, we present to you a separate rendition of the same bhajan, Vaishnav Janto, sung by the talented students of the College of Music, University of North Texas. In this endeavor, we appreciate the support from Dean John Richmond and Regent Ashok Margo of the University, as well as Rosanna Eckert and Vivek Virani for their tireless work in training and motivating these students to produce such an incredible bhajan. Please enjoy Vaishnav Janto by the students of the University of North Texas. I now have the honor to request the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Her Excellency Nancy Pelosi, to deliver the keynote address. Please welcome Madam Speaker.
Good evening, everyone. It's really a personal privilege as well as an honor to be here with each and every one of you. When I didn't see the US in the first presentation, I thought I might have to get up here and say, Vashana Tanaho, or words to that effect. Uh, but wasn't that beautiful from East Tex the Texas uh, University? Very beautiful. Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for the invitation to be here this evening and an honor to be here with the Mr. Minister, um, my friend, as when he was former ambassador, I learned a lot from him. And uh, congratulations to you on your new position. And I'm, as was mentioned by the ambassador earlier, our support in Congress has always been bipartisan. So I'm so honored that the former chair of the, Armed, the Foreign Affairs Committee, Ed Royce, is here. <laughs> Chairwoman Ileana Ross Layton of Florida. Former chair, and from uh, New York, Joe Crowley, my, Joe Crowley, whom I had the honor of traveling with, with President Obama uh, to India. We were there for Republic Day. Uh, it was a fabulous trip and a lot of yoga, not, <laughs> but in the parade. Any other members here that I haven't seen? Please wave. We are out of session, uh, but we're not without of admiration uh, for India and the important occasion this is, and an honor for us to have it at the Library of Congress. The um, distinguished service of the minister and the ambassador uh, make it easy for us to learn so more every day. It's a pleasure to be with all of you as we observe the 150th birthday of Mahatma Gandhi at the same time as we observe the 90th birthday of someone who learned so much from him from a distance the Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr. These legacies of these two extraordinary men may have forever shaped our nations and changed the course of history in both of our countries and indeed in the world. The relationship between the United States and India is a shining example of mutual cooperation, prosperity, and peace and respect. As the world's largest democracies, yours the largest, ours the oldest, uh, we have been partners in the fight to expand justice and ensure the blessings of liberty for all. In America, generations of Americans of Indian descent have enriched our communities, our democracy, with their beautiful culture and rich traditions, not to mention their entrepreneurship uh, fueling our economy. Our, caucus, our government has been strengthened by the leadership of Indian American members of Congress, Senator Kamala Harris, Representative Ami Bera, who was on our trip with President uh, Obama, uh, Representative Pramila Jayapal, Representative Raja Krishnamurthy, who was lead author on one of those resolutions, and Representative Ro Khanna. About Ro Khanna, I could talk about all of them, but let, Ro particularly wanted you to know this story. Ro Khanna's grandfather, uh, whose last name is Amarath Nath, Vid Yakankar, probably, okay, was a champion for freedom who spent years in prison alongside Gandhi in the quest for Indian independence. Today, Rep. Khanna proudly honors his family's legacy of service and sacrifice in his, in his work and leadership to build a better future for all. But his connection is a direct one to Mahatma Gandhi. As members of Congress, we have been privileged to lead official visits, gone on official visits to India, meet with leaders and exchange with citizens to strengthen the bonds of our friendship between our leadership, but also among our people. Seeing the joy and vibrancy of the Indian people, especially the children, has always been an inspiration. Our 2017 trip was critical to advancing strong economic ties, reaffirming our shared commitment to tackling the climate crisis, and securing peace in the region and around the world. And in New Delhi in 2008, it was an honor to place a wreath at the Raj Ghat Memorial, located at the site of the Gandhi cremation. Gandhi's story of peaceful struggle to free the people of India had a meaningful impact on the lives of many Americans. For me, as the ambassador and the minister, no one have referenced, this is very personal for me. I have always, since my childhood, carried India in my heart, largely because of Mahatma Gandhi. When I was a little girl, <laughs> I 
this is a very dignified occasion, but I'll tell you about it when I was a little girl. I went into school one day and I had on a hat and the, one of the big tall nuns, I was a little girl, said, who do you think you are, Mahatma Gandhi with that hat? Well, I didn't know who Mahatma Gandhi was, but I wasn't going to let on to her that I did not know. So I immediately went to the library after school and at, and at that time, even that was like in the 50s, the library had books on Mahatma Gandhi for children already already had books for children. So that's when I started absorbing everything I could and more, um, shall we say, uh, bigger books, uh, smaller print as I got older. And people would always say, we always know you'll have every book out of the library on Gandhi. Such an inspiration. But it is um, around that same time, uh, Reverend Martin Luther King, whose birthday we celebrate, 90th today, and Coretta Scott visited visited India, and how much we draw upon India and who we are. As you probably know, and I say it again, probably mispronouncing, satyagraha, uh, that word, has two meanings in Sanskrit. Nonviolence and insistence on the truth. And isn't that exactly what Gandhi took from India? Nonviolent insisting on the truth, learning from the experience and the depth of strength of that message. Not just the example, the strength of that message of Mahatma Gandhi. And of course, it made all the difference in the world, in our country. So that is a debt that we owe to India for that inspiration, more than an inspiration, that strength of, of message uh, to make a difference in our own country. Though he knew it would mean sacrifice and struggle, Dr. King would insist on the truth in the heart of our nation, They're all, that we're all created equal, and that to do so, insisting on the truth nonviolently. Dr. King insisted on the truth at lunch counters, marches, and like Gandhi, from jailhouse cells. He insisted on the truth of his dream of equality and opportunity for all, regardless of race, gender, or creed. As we face the great uh, injustices of war, inequality, oppression, and tyranny, we all have an obligation to continue to answer Dr. King and Gandhi's insistence on the truth, nonviolently, with action. We are called to act to give voice to millions of refugees fleeing violence and natural disaster and ensure that we honor the dignity and worth of every person, man, woman, and child. I'm especially grateful, as I have expressed to uh, Prime Ministers, uh, Prime Minister Modi as well, Mr. Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Minister, when he was ambassador, uh, how much we all, so many of us appreciate the hospitality that India extends to His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And when I've mentioned, <laughs> when we mention that to the Prime Minister and the previous Prime Minister, they've always said, no need to thank us, that's who we are that beautiful, beautiful respect for the dignity and worth of every person. The minister and the ambassador, the minister especially, talked about the climate crisis and the commitment that the Prime Minister Modi has to that. And I was there in Paris and saw that agreement come together. And you will agree, Mr. Minister, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy, but it was done. And, he, and when the Prime Minister came to Congress for a joint session of Congress. The ambassador was there when we met with him, the leadership met with him before the speech. And I m mentioned about climate crisis and that, and thank you for your leadership. He talked about Mahatma Gandhi and the environment. Remember? He told us about whether it was water or conservation or whatever it is, Gandhi understood the worth, the respect we had to have for nature all that long time ago. Uh, so as you have said, both of you so brilliantly, what would Gandhi do now? Pretty, uh, he would be a leader in this important challenge uh, to God's creation, our, our planet. Uh, we're called to fight this fight, which is the existential threat of our time, really, uh, jeopardizing the health, security, and future of our children and our grandchildren. We're called to act and stand firm against malign actors seeking to destabilize our democracy and our free and fair elections. At the same time, of, uh, with a, this time of 
challenge and opportunity, we must act drawing the strength and inspiration for Dr. King and Gandhi's example. Just as the torch passed from Gandhi to Dr. King, the torch now belongs to all of us. 150 years after Gandhi's birth and 90 years after Dr. King was born, we must now pass the torch to millions of young uh, and courageous people across the globe who are blazing a trail toward a more just and equal world for all. It is our responsibility to support them and empower them in this critical mission to build a future worthy of Dr. King, worthy of the legacy of Mahatma Gandhi. So it is uh, for our colleagues, and I know I speak in a bipartisan way for our colleagues, House and Senate, who aren't here because we're out of session, uh, that uh, observing Mahatma Gandhi's 150th birthday at the same time as we observe Martin Luther King's birthday on the campus of the US Capitol is for us a thrilling experience. We're out of session, but I told the ambassador when he told me about this, no matter where I am, no matter what it, when it is, uh, because of that little girl in that school uh, learning about Mahatma Gandhi, it will be a, a thrill of my life to be there uh, to honor the memory and the legacy, the leadership, the strength, the inspiration of Mahatma Gandhi. Thank you all very much for giving me this program. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and a very special thank you to you for taking out the time, despite Congress not being in session as of now. So a very special thank you. A big round of applause for Speaker Nancy Pelosi. I now request the Honorable External Affairs Minister of India, His Excellency Dr. Jay Shankar, to present a bust of Mahatma Gandhi to the Honorable Speaker on this historic occasion. And may I also request Ambassador Harsh Fingler to also come on stage. Thank you so much. I thank you so much for this beautiful, beautiful bust of Mahatma Gandhi. I will display it with great pride in the Speaker's Office of the Capitol of the United States, so anyone who visits there will see uh, the respect and admiration that we have. Thank you so much. I love it. Thank you. Let us thank our host. Didn't you do a good job? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This concludes the formal proceedings. I now invite you to continue this conversation on the ideas and legacy of Mahatma Gandhi over some delicious Indian vegetarian food to the accompaniment of live music. Uh, may I introduce to you our musicians. On the sitar, we shall have acclaimed artist, Mr. Sambarth Rakshit, and playing on the tabla would be a renowned talent, Mr. Tejas Tope. Thank you all once again for joining us today and have a wonderful evening. Thank you.